You're watching The Edward Fowler Show. Now, here's your host, Edward Fowler. Good evening and welcome to my show here on this Wednesday afternoon or morning or night, wherever you're tuning in from. This is my show, uh, The Best Kept Secret on YouTube for over five years now. And tonight we've got a pleasure of having a great singer, songwriter, also an actress or an actor, however you want to pronounce uh -huh. it. But uh, it's, it's great to have on someone from Southern California, uh, as always. Hopefully it's sunny over there, by the way. And um, her name is Cara Connolly. Welcome to my hey. show tonight. Thank you, Edward, for having me. You know, it is actually sunny today here in Los Angeles, Southern, sunny Southern California. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's like it's been so cold here on the weekends and rainy, but then it's been so sunny during the week. And it's kind of been like a joke, you know, amongst people that like, you know, when we're inside working is when it's going to be nice and sunny. Yeah. And when it's time to go and like hang <laughs> it's gonna be freezing and we're gonna have to stay inside so <laughs> yeah, california's been the weather's been a little wonky lately uh well hopefully things um, get up to how they should be as the song goes always sunny in california um I know. But... so they say right that's yes. how it's supposed to be that's what i've heard <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've got some people already tuning in live. Thank you so much for tuning in live. And to prove this is live, uh, we've got some comments from, for instance, uh, Val is tuning in. Hello. Nice to see from you. Uh, she is simply amazing. Uh, we've also got another comment saying as well, Nicholas, uh, best of luck friend, Kawa, um, as well, tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you will like uh, the chat and you can feel free to join in at any time by leaving I a love comment. Both, I love both of those humans so much. So I'm so grateful that you're on and you're leaving comments and please like leave us comments throughout this show, right? Because it'd be so great to uh, to chat with you guys too. Absolutely. And we can ask those questions uh, to Kara uh, throughout yeah. the conversation. But uh, you know, how are things currently in uh, Southern California? Because I know uh, a few months ago you released your latest uh, single called Magic, which I did post uh, on a bit of a tease off on my social media last night when I uh, was announcing that you'd be on the show today. Um, but what's been the uh, the feedback so far from that, from both the actual single and the music video is meant uh, in inside of it? Thank you. That's really sweet of you to uh, to post that. I saw that you shared Magic, so thank you. You know, Magic. The response has been so overwhelmingly positive. I'm so grateful to everyone who's been supporting me and who's been streaming and sharing. Magic is the song that's done the best for me so far in my whole catalog of released music. So I feel really grateful for that. You know, I had a feeling that that would be the case just because ever since I wrote it, I sort of knew Magic was a special song. At least it, it was to me, you know, to me, I, I loved it immediately. And I started playing it around town in Los Angeles. Like I was playing it at the hotel cafe and at the Peppermint Club and um, on these like live streams that I was doing. And I felt like everyone would always come up to me about that song specifically, you know, and they'd be like, I love that song. When are you going to put it out? And so I kind of got in my head about making sure the production captured the energy that the live performance was giving off while also adding something new and you know feeling a little dance pop um mixed with other genres that i love and that i listen to and uh yeah the response has been so overwhelmingly positive like it got great reviews and publications and it's still getting streamed you know to this day like increasingly and i feel like it's interesting to see how it's ending up on these different playlists and stuff I feel like magic, um, yeah, definitely has the has been the the most well received song that I've put out so far. So that's all I can ask for, right? Yeah. With each release, is like you hope that it tops the last one, mm. and and at, you know that's all you can hope for. And sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. And you know sometimes it's hard to say why that is and why that isn't. It, it's it's impossible to know like why someone's discovering this one song, whether it ended up in a certain place or you know how or why but all i can be is very grateful for the fact that people seem to be resonating with that one 
That's good. That's good to hear because, you know, as I mentioned to you a minute ago, I did tease it on, on, on my social media for my uh, followers to get a taste of your music, of your latest music. And, you know, I the, the reason I picked it as well is because it was so groovy. It was so, it was just fun to, you know, enjoy and to get involved with. And that's something why I thought I would share that. And again, I did share it again this, uh, this evening when I was just showing the live, and we're live. Uh, so I thought I'll share it again because it's, it's just so that people can listen to what's currently out there and get to know you a bit more because I'm sure that many people from over here, from this side of the ocean, might not know you as well. But they'd be quite surprised because you've popped up on, on big screens over here in other uh, endeavours. So, so you know, it's, it's cool in that sense, but they get to hear you in a different light as well. So I'm glad that things are going in the right direction. It's always good to try and outdo the last single or album you do as well. And and do you think you're achieving that uh, at the moment compared to other singles in the past? Yeah, you know, what I will say is I'm writing a lot right now for even future projects. Yes. <laughs> like I'm always writing, like I feel like I'm always like two albums ahead or one album ahead. Like. I, in this case right now, I think I'm two projects that had wow. or three even. I don't know. I, I just keep writing all the time. And that's my favorite part of this whole crazy thing is the writing. And so I always just continue to write and I start to kind of find a new vibe. And so even though I'm going to be releasing this album, California Queen, which is my next record that's coming this year, um, even though I'm going to be doing that, right, it's like, I am still writing and I, I don't have plans to release these immediate songs because I still have others that are like finished, ready to go. But I know I will release them eventually mm -hmm. and I'm really proud of them. I'm really excited about them. So yeah, my sound just keeps evolving. I keep writing about new topics. Like I'm just exploring new areas of growth and uh, sounds I'm interested in and where I feel like I'm going emotionally and personally. And so yeah, I think I'm topping it. <laughs> I hope in some ways, like it's not right. Like the thing is, you never try, at least from my perspective, to like copy the thing you've already done. Like I could try to write another magic, but what's I'm not interested in doing that because I've already written and released magic. Right. Yeah. So for me, I'm trying to write another song that is as exciting to my listeners as Magic was, um, but for different reasons, right? Like maybe they're surprised that I went this direction or surprised that I went there lyrically, or I'm just always trying to evolve and grow and become, you know, a new version of myself because I love all kinds of music and, um, yeah, I just don't ever want to feel limited to like, oh, that song did well. So now that's my sound because I think, yeah, I think it could be. And if another song organically comes out like that, then great. But I also don't want to limit myself to like, you know, what the sound is, if that makes yeah. sense. No, it does make sense. It does make sense. And uh, I, I, I want to keep uh, everyone happy. So I am reading some of the comments that are coming through while uh, Kara was uh, was responding to that great question and gave a great answer as well, which we'll get into in just a moment. Uh, but we're going to say, of course, uh, Val says, magic is fabulous. Uh, Nicholas says, uh, I wouldn't miss this for the world. I have missed all of her streams so far due to the time difference. This makes me sad, but at least you get to enjoy this one now. So hopefully that's on uh, your biggest achievement so far for this year. I'm um, so happy that you made this one. And I <laughs> always understand, of course, the time difference. Yes. It's, it's, you, you know, we need sleep. And, uh, and you know, a lot of them you can catch the recording. So I'm glad with this one, though, that you're here because it's, you know, you're, I guess this time zone is more your time zone because <laughs> Edward, you're out there in Europe on... Um, so it's great to get to connect with somebody over on the other side of the pond. <laughs> yes, yes. For a change, for a change. And, and yeah. uh, you know, uh, Val also says, I truly connect with Kara's music. I love dancing off my negative thoughts. Exactly right. That's what I was getting at before. Uh, you are growing and evolving, my dear, as well, she mentioned. So, yeah. So, well, oh, I'm glad you can hear words. that. You know, some of my... Um, Karakeets, as we call each other, but <laughs> they've been around from the beginning, right? So they've really heard like every single song and the changes. And Val specifically was there when I first played. I didn't even have a single song out when I met Val, who's on this stream right now. 
Uh, truly, I, I played at the Hotel Cafe, which is a little venue in Los Angeles. And I'd never even released a song. I think I had a few recorded that were about to come out and I played some of those live for the first time. So Val's really been along for the entire journey. So for, for you to say that, Val, thank you. It means a lot. Yeah, no, absolutely. And of course, uh, I do. I, I have heard of that cafe in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I, it's quite well known, I think. But, uh, but I guess yeah, you 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 or you can give the uh, expertise on that because you're from Los Angeles. But uh, well, from that, it is, you know, yeah. they, they've had a lot. I'm just raising this. Um, they've had a lot of really crazy performers um, there, like John Mayer and. Um, Ed Sheeran, I want to say, and Katy Perry and Adele, and it's it's kind of a crazy little venue. Like it's such a small listener room, but they've just had amazing artists there. So I'm pretty lucky to be a part of that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you, you can now say as well that you you performed of those great legends in the business as well. So uh, hopefully. Uh, you get to perform there more and more and, and increase your following as you do. Because uh, you do, as I say, get better each time you release something new. And and I like how you gave a bit of a teaser as well a few minutes ago, which I really appreciate. But speaking about the other songs and other albums you got lined up, uh, is there a particular place you go then to to get all these inspiration for ideas? Or do they just come to you as you are anywhere in, in, in Los Angeles? You know they're all over the place i just wrote in nashville like a few weeks ago and i had a bunch of ideas you know like where i write them isn't so um me like i guess meaningful to me it's more like the topic itself so for example i have a notes app in my phone with all these ideas because i know i'm gonna have writing sessions yeah coming up whether that's here whether that's in nashville whether i just have a day free at home and I always want to have ideas like on hand. So I have a bunch of voice notes in my phone that have like little melodies that I come up with in the middle of the night. So if I can't sleep and I have a melody in my head, I'm like, oh gosh, I have to get up now. I'm going to press record on the voice note and I have all these melodies in my phone. <laughs> so I, um, I have that for the melodies and then for like lyric ideas, title ideas, song ideas, I have like a notes app on my phone. So if I ever get into a session and I don't know what to write about, I just pull that up and I, I'm like, oh, here are 50 ideas. And I shout them out. If I'm with people, I shout them out. <laughs> if I resonate with them, then I'll then we run down that path. And so for me, they kind of come in all different places and at all different times when I'm driving, if I hear a word, if I um if i went through an experience and i think that that would be cool to write about like they come in all ways and i'm very open to any and all of it i just want to make sure i remember it so i have like my little notes app <laughs> yeah no, absolutely good uh, it's a good uh, good technique to remember as well because i guess you get so many different creative juices and it's hard to remember all of them so it's good to uh, make a note somewhere so you can go back when you do want to have ideas to go from as well. It's good to see. And what what would you say it takes you a few hours or, or a couple of days to put all these different ideas together to come up with a with a track or an album? No, you know, I would say that more often than not nowadays, I'm writing and recording a song like in the same day. Wow. It's pretty it's I, things have changed a little bit like I used to kind of be like I'd write something and then I'd go to I'd revise it like a few months later yeah now I'm finding that I'll have like a session with a producer friend and I'll or will write an idea in like two hours an hour and a half two hours and then I'll record the final vocals in the next hour um and they'll be doing like pretty much I'll be writing the song while they'll be simultaneously building up the production oftentimes um, and then that third hour, I'll record the final vocals, the harmonies, the doubles, everything. Then I'll leave. So it's probably like three, four hours. And then I'll get like a demo back. And then I'll give suggestions on the production and ideas and stuff like that, which I'm also doing in the room as well. Yeah. Um, I'm often coming with like a pretty clear production idea. Like, hey, this is the vibe. I want it to be on this instrument. These are the parts. And like, that's been more so the process over the last year or so. Before that, I would say I would write a song in like a you know hour, two hours on the guitar, and then I'd bring it. I'd come up with a production idea over however long that took, and I'd find a producer, and then we would produce it out together. 
and kind of try different things and see what would work. And then I would throw ideas and sing ideas for instruments and they would try things and I would play things. And um, that was more common. And I think it like, but the song itself usually comes pretty fast. Like I would say what takes me longer is the production yeah, and getting the production to sound exactly how I hear it. Cause I'm, I'm kind of a psychopath <laughs> when it comes to like everything being like what I, you know, mixed the certain way and, sounding a certain way and like having little parts like i'll i'll go in and be like okay at minute 102 there's a little breath that we need to remove <laughs> like i'm like, i'm really truly a, a total psychopath <laughs> no, no. everyone's got their own techniques and and you know their own creativity it's good to see that and i hope it continues as well for for, for months and years to come and it ties in as as well as i'm sure you've probably seen on the uh i, I don't know if you've got the youtube chat open up but we can see uh, that one of your followers uh, has also mentioned about how um you know every time i encounter or collaborate with an upcoming female artist i recommend they check out Kara as an artist Kara has something special about her in the way she writes songs and delivers them she's also known uh, she also knows what it's like to work hard when working with music great inspiration and role model for young women who want to be a singer couldn't agree more with you there uh, with that great comment that's but, so kind. Oh my gosh, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> but on that on that note, though, uh, would you say when you first started uh, making music and making content, do you think it was harder at the beginning, in the way in the sense the the way the industry worked compared to how it is now, or do you think there's still a stigma there? Um, I think it was harder at the beginning just because I had less experience navigating it gotcha i don't think that the landscape has like tr uh, significantly changed since i've been around but i feel like i'm better at navigating it now um you know at the beginning you you have to learn how to advocate for your ideas and for what you're looking for and you know i feel like i would work with producers that didn't respect my maybe per, uh, my idea for what the song would be and then kind of just steamroll over it. And those are still things when I'm like, oh man, that moment, I still want my idea, but I didn't fight for it because I was kind of either being talked down to or felt like, oh, I don't have enough experience or I'm a young woman. And so I think that I've learned how to navigate those situations better. And I've learned how to, you know, kind of set things up in advance so that I'm having the experience that I want to have. And that's not always, you know, it's not always the case. Sometimes things happen that are out of our control or that we can't predict, but yeah. um, I definitely feel stronger a couple of years in like having just learned so much. Like I've worn so many hats as an artist, you know, like I've been the producer, I've been the publicist, I've been the marketing, um, I've been the mixing engineer. Like I've, been writing for other artists like i've kind of played all these parts you know which require all these different hats <laughs> and um i think because of that as frustrating as it's been sometimes because it's like requiring so much energy in all these directions when i really sometimes just want to be like writing the music and singing um it has taught me so much like i know how to do every single person's job right now i feel so it's allowed me to come with a lot more strength nowadays to be at, like kind of asking for the right things and asking the right questions and being on top of everything even when i do bring other people in just because i've done it before so that like that level of experience and having been like in the trenches deep in the trenches i think is allowing me to be like the business woman that i am today if that makes sense and i think that um that only comes from like all those years of having to like strap up and do it and do it when it was hard and like when you know when it wasn't like it's just tough i think that a lot of the times young women aren't taken seriously you know and unfortunately you hear it a lot like you'll be in sessions and people i don't know just the comments that are made that are like if I'm talking about how I'm busy or whatever, and it's like, oh, are you busy painting your nails or whatever? And you're like, no, actually, <laughs> uh, I'm actually busy like running operations, but um, that's kind of the way that you're talked to a little bit. And I think that I've just learned how to either shrug that off or how to really approach things from a position of strength early on, you know, 
So yeah, it's it's been such a journey. I don't know if I answered your question at all there. Oh no, but... you're fine. You're fine. It's a good it was a, it's a good story with good response, and I'm sorry to hear that. By the way, that some people speak to you like that. By the way, you should just tend to you know do one, as we say over here, in the politest of ways. <laughs> Yeah, I it's crazy sometimes like the things that are said, right? Yeah. Um, I think there's just like, especially when I was younger, even I would be working with men that were like a lot more, you know, they had certain bigger songs or they had certain more experience, but I'm mm. like, but I wrote these songs. So I know how I envision the production. Yeah. Like I've been thinking about it since the second I wrote it, but I feel like there, there's a lot of attitude being like, you don't know, I know, I've been in this industry for blah, blah, blah years, or I've worked with so-and-so, so-and-so, and I know better than you, you hmm. know? And it's like, well, how is that the case though? Because I wrote this song and I know how I envision it, hmm. right? Um, and on top of that, I'm paying you to make this how I want it to be, right? Or whatever yeah. it is, yeah. <laughs> especially at that time. So it's like, um, you know it's like it's just it's hard when you're not listened to or i think like a lot of the times i would be unsure when i was younger like whether or not somebody was giving me attention on the industry side because they actually liked my music or if they were just trying to like date me or something mm -hmm. and that was always hard to navigate because it's like you would get or i would get like a meeting with somebody that worked high up in a network or um, it was at a publishing company or like all these things that were goals of mine. Right. And then you would show up and, and I was like, I kind of get the sense that like, you, you don't, you're not even considering working with my music. Like you're just using that as an excuse to go on a date with me, you know? Wow. And that was, those were things that were hard to navigate, but unfortunately that's just, that is how it is. And I'm just being straight up with it. Like all of my female friends have experienced that, that are in the entertainment industry and i think that it requires um a lot of like just strength and perseverance and like persistence and wisdom to navigate those situations and to know when it's like when someone's not in it for your best interest you know or is not interested in you for the right reasons or maybe they're interested in you for both reasons but that's not what you want either right so um, like they like your music and they want to date you. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's when you're like, ah, I still don't really like this. Right. Like it doesn't feel right. So yeah. I'm actually writing a lot, a lot about that right now. And I don't think that sound or that idea is going to come. Those won't come out for a bit. Cause I have a couple other projects that like have the songs finished, but gotcha. I'm writing a lot about this is I'm giving you guys like the tea, the, the secret, the secret. <laughs> Only on the best kept secret, by the way. This is, this is, if yeah, you want juicy yeah, gossip, can... come on this yeah. show. <laughs> Only on this show can I tell yeah. you the secret from the gossip. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm writing some songs that are have a little more like fire to them. I think that are just from now having been in a place of experience, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so like these things can't happen anymore. Right. No. Like I just. I don't know. I really am strongly trying to like stand up and advocate for change in those areas. And I just find myself writing songs now about the kind of exploitation that we go through mm. as artists and also as especially as female artists. Um, I'm just writing a lot of like satire and stuff about the exploitation and the comments and things like that. And, and that's been my way of like healing it from the past because I think I never wrote about it you know i was writing about like my own thoughts or my relationships or whatever and i tend to have a really like positive approach to things of like here's the problem and here's the way we get to the other side of it yeah. through the song that's kind of how i tend to write and so it's been fun to explore a little more of like the fiery side um that i think like i haven't really expressed in any way because i've just been like polite and kept going you know yeah, no, I agree. I agree with all that. And I do, and I do you know, I, I'm quite sad to hear about that, about what you guys uh, go through in the industry. So it's good to get that aspect out there. And if you were able to have the power to do something about it, what would you what would you do to make it better for, for female artists and just for artists in general? That's a really good question. Um, I think that well, it's a really hard question because I feel like there are so many things that need to be done, but I would say that people need to start 
viewing creatives in general as people of value because I think that a lot of the times because we have these big dreams people will kind of dangle our dreams like a carrot in front of us and they know that we love it so much that we would do it anyway like we would do it no matter what we would do it throughout the terrible sides throughout if it was paid if it wasn't paid like we would just do it no matter what and they take massive advantage of that unfortunately and they I think that because of that, there's a lot of this like exploitation and also this feeling of like, you should be so grateful that I'm giving you this exposure or this whatever, this stage or this platform. And, and a lot of it's like pomp and circumstance, like it's it's smoke and mirrors, you know, mm. a lot of it's not real, but they tell you these things because they want to get whatever they want. They're getting something out of the exchange, right? They're getting a free artist on their show or they're getting whatever and i think that there's so much of that goes on that goes on and because there's so many of us that have these big dreams and want these things they kind of treat you like um well if you don't take this bad deal then karen down the street's gonna take this deal um and so because of that i think that it's very hard for things to change because they're they use those things uh, tactics against you um i think that like in order for things to change uh, creative art will have will have to be valued very differently like it, it can't just be expected as like oh we just get this thing and like it doesn't matter the mental health of the person who created this or is bringing this service it doesn't matter if they're on the streets it doesn't matter if they're paid or not like they're gonna do this anyway like I think people have to start valuing um, creative artists in general and I think especially women, because I think men are, are known to more stand up for these things and be, and say like, and not, and not take it right. Um, because they've been conditioned to be allowed to, yeah. to say no, or to say that I, whereas women, I think we're, we're kind of raised to be polite and kind and nice. And it's like, just take these things and just welcome it and say yes. And don't be, you know, a bitch or whatever. I hate to say that, but that's the term. So I think that like in combination of, I think that people know that. And I think a lot of these organizations are unfortunately like it's still an old boys club in Hollywood, mm. like the music industry, the film industry, it's still an old boys club in many ways. And so I think it's seen one that you can take advantage of artists in general, because there's so many of us and that, you know, we need that opportunity. And I think too, especially with women, because you're like, well, and it's a woman and they're not going to, they're like, they're not going to say anything. Right. Um, that's a very, like an oversimplification of it, but I think that in general, people need to be valued for their contributions to the world in general, and they need to be heard and what they want, what they want. And I think it really also starts with the artists that like, we have to stop saying yes to these really bad opportunities that are painted out to be smoke and mirrors, like wonderful. Like, you know, I think it starts with us too, because like, if I say no to a bad opportunity that I'm being kind of pressured or bullied into taking bad terms, um, then I'm setting that standard for the rest of the artist. So if I say no to something, but then, you know, Jessica, I don't know any of these people, by the way, I'm just making up names. Like if Jessica, they go to Jessica next and Jessica knows it's a really bad deal, but she says yes, because it feels like, oh, well, this is all we can get then it perpetuates the system as well. So it's it's a really hard thing to change. Um, but I think artists, like we have to value ourselves and women, like we have to know our worth enough to kind of walk away from these situations that are toxic or bad. And I think that the other side, people that are offering these opportunities or that are in positions of power or in the industry, just because you can take advantage of somebody doesn't mean that you should. Yeah. Oh, I think that there has to be a big right reframe there. And, and that really just comes down to like being a good, good human being and, and having morals. Right. Mm. No, absolutely. So I don't know. It's a, it's a hard question to answer. I don't have it figured out by any means, but I hope that that at least gives like a little bit of insight into the, you know, cherry on top of no. like what where it could start. Yeah, no, absolutely. It does indeed. And, and uh, Val, uh asked a question as well by saying uh, that makes me so sad about the uh, previous statement of, of of what happens um with you guys about some people just want to have to have a meeting with you just to date you not actually talk about your music or 
or your acting or whatever it might be you're trying to offer uh, but she says um is that what inspired abuser the question mark oh that's a good question yeah i have a song abuser um yeah definitely you know i think abuser was definitely inspired by some of that it was like i was working with somebody at the time that i didn't feel like was listening to me and what i wanted for my own career or my ideas like i would say hey i want to do this and then they would just push it down and be like well that's not what you're doing you're going to do this and it's like i just felt really um it was like they tell me i was wonderful and then they break me down and be like yeah but you need me for all these reasons right so it was like i was built up to be broken down and i think that happens a lot where it's like you get somebody in and you're like you're so great and you're so talented and i want to work with you and you're like the best and you're pro prolific and you're amazing and then they're like but you're shit without me right um, and you need me. And then it creates this like codependent relationship where you believe that you, you can't do it on your own, but you're kind of getting this really toxic negative behavior or dialogue all the time. Right. And it makes you feel bad about yourself and it makes you doubt your own abilities and your own gut, like your gut decisions. It makes you doubt your own ability to make decisions about your own life and your own self and your own career when people kind of talk to you like that. So yeah, I, I remember I, I stopped working with that person because I felt like it was so wishy-washy. And like, if I said I would want something, they would like, I had this idea. I'm like, I have this idea for my record or this thing. They would say no. But then three days later, they'd come to me and be like, I have this like, great idea for you. And it would be the same thing that I just said four days ago. <laughs> um and it felt really toxic in that way and I, I didn't like that so I ended up ending that relationship and then the day that I ended it I remember sitting with my guitar like on my couch at home and writing abuser because it quite frankly felt kind of abusive like to not have your ideas heard and then have the person come with your same idea word for word and then act like that now because they had the idea even though they didn't but it's a good idea now Right. So it's it's almost like so, yeah, in some ways, I guess it's it definitely is about the industry abuser. It's not about a romantic relationship, um, even though it's kind of written like it could be right. Some people think it is and, and they resonate with it like that. And I'm like totally happy with that, too, if that's how someone, you know, connects to it. But no, it's about the industry. So. Yeah, in that way, yes, it's about a facet of it for sure. And I think like I find myself writing about more facets just because I'm so involved in this. This is my life and I write about what I know and, and this is what I'm, I've learned and I know really deeply now. So I find myself writing about some of it in like a different way. Yeah, no, grand, so grand, so and, uh, you know, it, it's just very shocking uh, what goes on behind the scenes as well, because because I, um, it's, it's just quite scary that these things happen and it's and it's not right. I think they should, uh, should uh, you know, be exposed and, uh, you know, make it things easier and better for, for uh, new artists and even existing artists to, to get the deals and feel what they are worth in regards to what they're trying to promote so but yeah so thank you for sharing uh, that with us this evening oh yeah of course you know i'm trying to be more and more transparent about it like it's it's not flattering to talk about no because i think you want to be like everything's great all the time right and i just don't and i and especially artists i found that a lot of my friends will tell me like these crazy things happening to, to them behind the scenes but then they sit down for an interview and they say everything's wonderful. And I think I totally get why they do that. No, I do as well, because you don't want to ruin your careers by, by saying, oh, yes, it's not wonderful and all that. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I definitely get why they, why they don't speak up about it in public. No, they don't want to ruin their careers. And, and if their music is fun, they don't yes. want to seem not fun. Right. They want to seem the character of whatever they're singing and they want to seem like I'm so grateful for everything happening. Mm. And all of that is true also right I'm, I'm trying to like allow for room for both like oh, i'm so grateful and i've had so much fun and i love my fans to death and i love creating music it's like the most magical thing on planet earth and also there are things in this industry that are really toxic and need to change mm. and i think that both can be true at the same time and i just feel like 
I just don't, I think one of my values really is like pure authenticity and honesty and transparency. And I just feel like if I didn't speak up for things, like I wouldn't be staying true to my value as an artist or a person. So yeah. yeah. So when I'm asked questions, I like, I just can't help. I think now in interviews, just but be completely honest because otherwise like nothing's ever going to change for anybody unless more people understand that this is the stuff that's happening. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with you there. Uh, but let's just uh, change subjects just for a few moments, because, uh, of course, uh, we can find you on your social media, uh, across social media. For the first time in a long time, I've actually posted about Fred here. So, uh, but you can find my guest on Facebook, Instagram, and Fred's under the word Cara Connolly, right there, quite easy to find. Well, on X, you go under MS, Miss Cara Connolly. So, uh, yes. what's Thank the you. difference there on X? And how can you put yourself a myth? Was, was Cara taken already? I'm only a miss on X. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. No, yeah, it was it was taken, and I was like, well, I guess Honest. I'll be MS Miss Cara Connolly on X and on a Facebook fan yeah. page. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, everywhere yeah. else, I'm Cara Connolly or Cara Connolly music. I, yeah. I couldn't get the same thing everywhere, so I was like, you know what? whatever like hopefully someday we can we can change it maybe i'll <laughs> have enough money to buy the person who has Kara Connolly. Actually, you know what's funny Kara Connolly doesn't even exist on x somebody has it and i think their account got shut down or something so they're not even there yeah but i could but i still couldn't take it because it was like one of those usernames that's like in limbo yeah you know? yeah say that with me say with me because like the name like my name is already taken from somebody who's not used a site since 2009 so you know yeah. they, should, they should really give it to me now <laughs> i know you're like why aren't you just giving this to me yeah. because they're clearly not using this. exactly right yeah exactly right or even i can't even have the word usually on because on facebook and instagram managers edit without a show but on x it won't let me have that w it's a pie too long damn these things <laughs> also there's so many social media platforms yes it's like we have we're like and i have different fans in different on different ones mm. so i feel like i have to update all of them right because they they're all in everyone's in different places which is cool but i'm like can we just all pick one yes i know i know that there is too many it's hard to keep up like for instance um I, last night for instance i posted this on facebook x and instagram uh I, yeah. as you probably know because you you did go on threads and you did like something on Fred's of mine. And I thought, oh, yeah, don't I forgot about Fred. So, I, so then I posted it on Fred's as well. Because I forgot all about it. Thinking, like, you know, oh, no, that's not very good looking for me. I forgot it, so. about Fred's too until yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, I should put this on Fred's. Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I, I do the same thing. I thought, oh, yeah, I better, I better post on there. But you, 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 you can see that I'm not very active on Fred's because it's, it's always forgotten about. <laughs> I don't know who's not active it. on Fred's because I don't understand the difference. What is the difference between Fred's and X yeah. and all these things i'll do it because like i said i love my fans so mm. much and they're on different platforms and i want them to still be a part of everything going on but it's like really what is the difference exactly. but you know what it's okay i think some people use different platforms in different ways like they have you know they use their facebook for one thing and their twitter for another thing and instagram for another thing or whatever or TikTok. I actually do post different things on TikTok, I've found. But I feel like with some of these others, it's like I want every there's different people in different places and I want them to see all the things that the others are getting to see. So I yeah. end up finding myself posting the same thing, you know, on different platforms. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. But uh, on, on that note, though, uh, you can follow uh, my guests on those platforms, share around, tell about her music, tell about all her exciting projects as well. Check out her website as well because <laughs> we you know supporting you uh, as you would support us and you know off topic as well because when i when i when i uh, got in contact with you of course we were going to do this a few months ago but then i i responded to the wrong email address i forgot to cc the one you responded back with that explains that why you didn't get any responses until you went to an open email so my apologies for that but what made you to um, accept the invite i'm just i'm just curious by the way Oh, that's a great question. Oh, you just seemed really cool. Honestly, I checked out some of your interviews and you seemed like a really kind hearted, genuine person. Thank and you. 
you asked really great questions and I liked your guests. Like I checked out some of their music and I liked them as artists. Okay. So I felt like it would be really cool to be in that group of like high quality humans, yes. you know, and people. Yes. So that was my reason, but I'm I'm curious where you you know why you approached me. <laughs> <laughs> well, first let let me come back to you first. So uh, I'm hoping that I am delivering on all those aspects from what you saw from those other great interviews and and other ways I've 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 asked those great questions because they they just come on the spot. They don't they're not written down beforehand. They go off what we discuss. So so hopefully I'm delivering on that front. It feels natural, right? It allows yeah. it. To- to go where it wants to go as opposed to being forced which I think is better because you actually get like a genuine connection and conversation yeah no I completely agree with that so I'm glad I'm delivering on that so answering your question not often people ask me questions I like it uh, (laughs) is um so you you came up you came up as a digestion (laughs) um on my Instagram account, uh, funny enough, you came with a suggestion. I think you must have done like an advert or something, but somehow I received it. So I don't know if you were wanting the target audience to be from, from the UK, but somehow I received it. I then went through your profile and I liked what I saw, I liked the music. So I thought, you know what, let's, let's just reach out, see what happens. And uh, I did not expect to get a response from yourself directly. I thought it would be from somebody else. So I was quite happy for a change. Telling you I do everything. Yeah, no, it's quite nice. It's quite nice because it's, it's, it's sometimes hard to build a relationship, a rapport with with the artist before they come on the show because you do it through somebody else and you build a relationship through them, but you can't do it with, with the actual person until they come on the show. So, so it's quite nice to build up rapport with, with yourself because because uh, we had a bit of a joke about the time difference as well, didn't we? Because you because because at the time your clocks went forward, but I was hadn't gone forward. So we would have done this at seven o'clock my time, but it would have been one p.m. or uh, PM your time. Right, so. like mine went forward, your went back. Right, it was so confusing. And yeah. honestly, it was because I was like, I suck at math. Like I can't oh. even do anything. I'm so bad at like figuring out like yeah. even the time it's here. So I was like, then when now it's like two places, I was like, Edward, you're gonna have to carry the load here. Like what is? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Edward, just tell me what do we do? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'm glad we talked about that. Otherwise, this would have been all Harvey Wong. So uh, at least we got that sorted. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been on at the wrong time. Yeah, because I, I thought about it. I thought, mm, I wonder if she knows. I thought, I thought as far I mentioned it, it doesn't pass it, just to make sure. And luckily, no, she doesn't know. She doesn't know anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fair enough. But uh, thank you very much, no, no, for the kind words. Uh, I'm doing a fabulous uh, job. I appreciate that. And so I'm really enjoying this one. It's a lot of fun. You know, yeah, when doing... you have great chemistry uh, with a guest, it makes it more fun and uh, makes the time go even faster than it should do. Um, well, back to yourself. Back to yourself, though. I mean, uh, what are your goals then for this year? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, goals. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm definitely putting out my next album this year called California Queen. I'm going to do an album release party and show at the Troubadour in Los Angeles, which is like I don't know if you've heard of the Troubadour, but it's an iconic venue um, that has housed so many amazing artists like, uh, oh my gosh, like Carol King and James Taylor and Harry Styles and Stevie Nicks and a lot of these like really uh, classic, you know, 70s artists. Um, cool. It's Elton John had like one of his first big, big shows there. Like wow. it's, it has like a really it's a really amazing venue and I feel like it embodies that classic California feel. And since my record's called California Queen, I was like, I got to get into the Troubadour somehow. And it happened and it's cool. happening. So it's Thursday, August 22nd uh, of this year. And it's like my biggest show so far. And it would mean so much to me if everybody who could would come out. It's going to be an album release party. I'm going to have my vinyls. So I'm printing vinyls for California Queen. Um, So really my goal this year is to get that record out and like promote those songs and and, um, all the songs that have not been released so far. And I have a song called Urban Cowgirl that I've been teasing on instagram and tiktok and all the platforms that i'm gonna put out it's really fun it's kind of like a uh it's a fun take on actually it's a bit about the music industry because i'm i'm kind of comparing the music industry to the wild wild west 
Um, and I'm basically saying that like, this is the real wild, wild yeah. west. I'm calling myself an urban cowgirl, but I'm talking <laughs> about, you know, just what it's like, like uh, even the verses I'm, I'm talking about how I'm sticking around in this crazy kind of wild, wild west town, even after it's a ghost town, you know, even when I'm going down the 405 and I'm dodging cops or whatever. <laughs> so I'm talking, it's fun. It's a fun one. And it's definitely like a fun play on just being out here in LA, which I would say is the real wild, wild west. So uh, that's my goal, the goal to put that out. And then on an acting side, I just signed with a new acting manager. So um, my acting agent and my acting manager are like conversing on how to help me hit my goals as an artist this year. Um, I've been getting like a lot of callbacks for different feature films and stuff that are like in my favorite genre of work. And it's been so cool to like see that I'm actually getting called in now for roles that I would be like really excited to play. Um, so yeah, like my goal would be to, you know, be so great to book one of those. I, that's a little out of my control, right? Like I can do my very best, but whether or not I book it is not a goal, like in the same way that I can say releasing this album, I can make happen. And I know I can put out Urban Cowgirl and I have all these goals musically that I know are within my immediate control. But, um, Troubadour kind of was and wasn't like it was up to them whether or not they wanted to book me and thank God they did. Um, but yeah, with these movies, I'm like, I can see things getting closer as an actor like than ever before. Um, and I'm just getting in like way more rooms and I'm getting way farther in the process than I've ever gotten before. And so, yeah, my goal would be to hopefully get one of those because it'd be so fun to like be in a show or movie also. Um, yeah, I have big aspirations, you know, I'm like, whatever happens first or whatever happens, I like, I I'm just love creativity and I love storytelling mm -hmm. and whether that comes in the form, like I'm a huge movie buff. I love watching movies. It's like my favorite thing um, and shows and stuff, like whether it comes in the form of that or whether it comes in the form of an album or a song or like, I just love storytelling in general. So, yeah. No, absolutely and you know as you say dream big or dream home something on those lines I mean, yeah 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 dream bigger <laughs> that's it go that's the one dream big or go home so you're definitely going to do that and i hope that you can achieve all of those it's just like you're already two throws there so you know so fingers crossed for you thank you thank you so much i really appreciate that it's, oh, it's dream, dream being that and uh val uh wants to know as i want to know as well What's your favorite roles? What's my favorite roles? Yes. Oh, okay. So I really love watch. <laughs> I really love uh, watching thrillers and I really love like detective thrillers, like murder mystery thrillers. Okay. Um, I just find it really fun to like the kind of whodunit type yeah. thing, like trying to figure it out throughout the process. And I love when like those movies or shows have like a really crazy twist. <laughs> found myself going in for like the lead in these movies lately it's so funny like these kind of really like headstrong intellectual characters that are like detectives or maybe aren't even detectives but are like trying to solve the case <laughs> um like a detective would you know yeah. um and so it's been so fun because i'm like wait a second like this this is my favorite genre of film and show and it would be like so cool to so freaking cool to like lead that and be the one who's trying to solve the murder and like somehow i found myself you know going in for those this year and like getting called back for them and stuff like that and so i'm like oh wait maybe i maybe i somehow do fit this yeah character right so <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's been fun. It's been really fun. I just like love stuff like that. So like to get scripts like that, where I'm actually excited about the story is so refreshing because I for years I kept getting called in for like blonde number seven or whatever. And um, and it's fine. That's totally fine. But like I would sometimes read the script and I'm like, gosh, I'm going to go through like seven auditions for this. And I don't even like the script. Right. Yeah. And I don't even like the show concept. But I'm gonna go for it because my agent or whatever got me in for this, and I and I'm working hard, and I just want to book projects so I can keep working. And 
you know, I think like when you actually read a script that you're excited about, it's, it's rare. Um, because a lot of scripts I I'm like, well, I'll, I'll audition for this, but like, I'm not sure that I'll even like this movie, <laughs> you know, it's quite frankly, to be totally honest. And, uh, and I think like lately I've been getting some scripts that I'm, that I actually really like. So God. that whenever one of those come through, it's like, Oh, like I really would be so cool to get this, you know. Uh, but on that note, I want to know as well. Firstly, are you when 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 you watch those filler movies, are you always the one who knows who's done it straight away, or are you one of those people who is suspense all the way through till the end? Oh, like do I usually know who did it? Yeah, usually in the first five minutes of the show beginning or in the movie beginning, or are you one of those people? Who find who 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 it down as it goes along? Well, the good ones are the ones that they trick you. Yeah. You know, they you think it's somebody, and then like halfway through, you're like, oh no, like I can't, <laughs> I don't know that person. So I would say when I'm watching like maybe one that I don't end up loving, I usually do know who did it, and then I'm like, damn, that's not fun. Um, but when it's a really good show or a film you're always really surprised by who did it, I think. And I think that's what is like the testament of a really great film or show. The, the, the show, which was on uh, in, a, in Oba where you are in Los Angeles for many years. Uh, I love that show uh, called, uh, first came out as The Closer, then it got revamped as Major Crimes. That was a great crime show, class comedy. Uh, it was a, just great TV. Uh, I hope we see something yeah, like some that. Of them have been, some of them have been like crime slash comedies, yeah. actually. It works it's best. Always, it's so fun when you're like, how did you turn this into a comedy? That somehow, <laughs> somehow you did, right? And it's yeah. actually pretty, pretty funny. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. That, that, that I never once seen uh, when they uh, were going to like a baseball game and they found a dead body inside one of the detectives basements or get his garage just to say and and it's just amazing like how did this happen and then they decide not to phone it in they go to the baseball game they come back to phone it in and the body's been moved so it's like what on earth like wow and then they find it at some construction site and then decide to take over the whole scene which is quite hilarious without getting anybody's permission so the, it, it's just great tv it's a shame they don't make them as good as, uh, as those anymore uh, or more we maybe might see something like that with you maybe in the future i hope so that would be pretty fun i it mean would. yeah i i do i enjoy watching those i mean i like serial killers are so freaking scary to be yeah. honest like gosh it's like scarier than a horror film when you mm. think about it um ugh, it's the worst but um but yeah i definitely think it would be fun to be in something like that and especially like those characters are always really interesting like you know they tend to be really investigative and they're like very curious and you know kind of bold and make bold choices and like they're just they're they're really fun characters as opposed to you know sometimes i'm getting called in for like the girlfriend or something which is fun but it's not really my story right yeah um, whereas in those types of projects, it kind of feels like, you know, if you're playing more of the detective role, whether or not you're a real detective or not, it's like, it's actually really fun because it's, you're, you're the one uncovering the story as opposed to like having things just happen to you. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I agree, I agree with that statement. Um, would you, is, is there anybody you would want to collaborate with this year? Maybe on music or acting is there any way you would love to uh say wow well, I, I i can do something with, with that person bring our creative minds okay. together there's so many people um there's an artist named Sh shiva i'm hope i'm saying this right that i bet that i talked to that is i've been you know thinking of doing a collab with you know Honestly, mostly this year, I'm I'm focused on putting out my solo stuff because it takes so much energy to like market and release something, um, and it requires a lot of focus. So that's kind of where my headspace is is at at the moment. But of course, you know, collaborations are so amazing and key. And there are definitely like certain producers that I'm talking to are really excited to work with. Um, 
and like of course i mean there's a, i have a huge list of you know dream i guess directors that i would love to be in films for and artists i mean like my favorite artists that i would love to collaborate with i feel like um are a little out of reach for me at the present moment <laughs> <laughs> But my hope is that, like, as I keep growing, that eventually I'll be able to, you know, surprise collaborate with some of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love so many artists and and uh, it would be an honor to like to do collaborations. And I think that as uh, as I keep growing and as I like hopefully build more of a team around me, it'll allow me to do more of those. Yeah, no, absolutely. As we have some comments, let's see. Uh, let's see. Wow says I never. So Val says, "Wow, I never thought about you not being too crazy about a world that you're all disciplining for with a with a thinking emoji." Uh, this is a perfect conversation. She goes on to say as well with, with three love hearts. Uh, Nicholas says, "True story, Val. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, glad you are." Um, let's see. Um, and then Nicholas goes on to say about, I hope to be able to collaborate with Kawa at some point. Maybe not this year, at some point in the future. Yeah, that would be so fun. Nicholas is really good and, and a super, super talented artist. So everybody should should check out his work as well. Um, I'm like, I, I don't I would put it in the chat, but I don't think I, I don't see the chat, but it's Nantio. There's um he has a really amazing band. And I, I really love their songs, so I totally recommend checking out Nuntio. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that totally right, by the way. You know, it's hard until you hear someone say something out loud to know whether or not what you thought is correct. How yes. to pronounce. So uh, I agree. So you'll have to, you'll have to uh, correct me if I'm not cor not right. But um, but yeah, Nuntio, check it out. Put put it in the put your uh, Spotify links and your song links in the chat. He's, he's a really talented artist and producer and songwriter. And it's just so cool to have somebody who's so talented, like actually like my stuff. Uh, you know, it's like such an honor. So thank you. On that note, uh, before we end this live stream, uh, who would you uh, suggest to come on the show next? Oh my gosh, that's a really cool question to ask. Um, I would say, you know, my friend Joy Autumn is a super talent. She's amazing. We write a lot of songs together for her projects and she has an album out right now called Rainy Sunday that is really amazing and she produced it and it's sort of like this um, dreary folk pop kind of energy and she would be so great. She has a... Um, she has a cover album of like all of Kurt Cobain's Nirvana songs and it's really cool. So I think Joy Autumn would be great to have on. I think she's super special. Um, my like regular artists that I write and collaborate with for like both my songs and her songs is Teddy Gold, um, T-E-D-D-I Gold. And she has a lot of like really fun hyper pop stuff really kitschy really quirky lots of colors and she has some songs coming out this year too that i think she'd be really cool to have on also um you know nuntio nicholas would be cool to have on he's he's on here right now in the chat but he, he would be a cool guest as well um really talented and really creative and I just, you know, all the music is very uplifting and positive and puts you in a good, good mood. So I would say him for sure. Um, I'm trying to think Val would probably have some suggestions too, because she follows so many amazing, amazing indie artists um, that, that she just loves. But yeah, those are a few off the top of my head. Miss Machina, I've written a couple songs with for her. She's really great. Um, M-I-S-S, -S, <laughs> not ms like my twitter <laughs> m-i-s-s-m-a-c-h-i-n-a -S -S um she'd be great and then i write a lot of songs with this amazing young artist named kati and kati would be so great to have too k-a-a-t-i-i -I. um they're amazing and like have some really cool interesting unexpected sort of songs so those are some off the top of my head I, there's so many more gosh I, I know i'm missing like so many people um, oh, Emily Coop. Sorry, I just keep giving lists. Like, <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. No more justice of uh, 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 
Uh, welcome. <laughs> I like hear all your suggestions, all these suggestions. Emily Coop is really great too. She's um got like some kind of country rock pop vibes. And I think she would be super cool. Lucy and Lemare, super like pop and fun and light and happy and good vibes. Um, those would be my suggestions. I'm sure there's more. You can email me. Now we have each other. We talk via email. So yeah. if you ever need suggestions, I feel like I have like millions. <laughs> These well, are just like my friends popping into my mind, you know. No, it's cool. It's, no, it's good. I appreciate that. And I will, I will, uh, if I, if I need any uh, suggestions, I'll definitely reach out to you because, you know, I'm, I'm always wanting new guests, you know, different people to have on the show, you know, to, to give a spotlight to. So, and, and, and I also hope as well that uh, you will come back on the show. Uh, doesn't matter what projects you may have on. Hopefully you will come back uh, on the show again uh, to, to bring us all your exciting news and other exciting projects you're working on not just in the world of music or acting could be completely something else but you're, you're more than welcome uh, to come back on the show anytime uh, the offer's there uh, for you I would love that thank you this has been so much fun I've, I've had such a good time seriously good good I'm glad I'm glad you had a good time and I hope everyone who's been watching slash listening to this I've also had a great time as well let's see um Let's see. Val says, oh, thanks. Uh, I guess that's because of the suggestions you said. Uh, she says, uh, suggestions, the newbies or Kevin Ashba are, are, are great too. Uh, I'll, I'll look into them as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nicholas says, Eric will check out Maniva or Arik, two extremely talented female artists. I've been mispronouncing any of those names, I will check them out for sure. Uh, and then Val says, yes, please, a comeback interview would be fab. Yes, well, I like to, you know, I, I always said, hey, we're, who come on the show, they're all welcome to come back. And and you see how many do come back on the show. Not many for some reason, but uh, but uh, hopefully you will. Um, but before you go, though, let's remind people, if you are new, that you can find my guest, Cara Connolly, on social media, right there across your networks, Facebook, Instagram, and, of course, threads under that same name. But on X, it's Miss Cara Connolly on X as well. It. Don't forget, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> yeah, but, my website is uh, www.caraconnolly.com, so you can kind of find like all my social platforms from that one spot if that's easier too. Yes, and not just that though. On that same website, you can find out all the latest news, tours, you know, contact information, upcoming dates, all on your website as well. Got to plug that, obviously. So, uh, means everybody, everybody, so check out, not just for your social source, but also for all the important information regarding yourself. And I should say as well, before we let you go, I keep saying that, but I truly mean it. <laughs> uh, what are, you know, what's your dream uh, location to perform you out of? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would love to play at the Hollywood Bowl. I love the Hollywood Bowl and the Greek. Both those venues in LA are so cool because they're like outdoor amphitheaters where you're right in the Hollywood Hills and they're so beautiful and so peaceful. And I was actually in an opening act conversation uh, competition for the Hollywood Bowl a few years ago where I got really close to like being able to open at the Hollywood Bowl. And I and I was like, I didn't make it, but I was super close. And um, I really hope at some point I just get there in some other way, you know, because it's such a beautiful venue. And I yeah, the Greek is beautiful, too. It's just there's nothing like it. It's like you're under the stars and it's just great it's just beautiful in hollywood which is like my home you know feels like my hometown now these hills Good. so yeah it would be so cool to get to play that and by the way i just want to say go ahead <laughs> i'm gonna show you guys this because it's funny i like was running around today so i haven't eaten anything yet today so before i got on here i like quickly made a bagel <laughs> And I, I didn't eat it because I was so like invest. I just loved our combo and I was like so invested. I don't know what I was thinking. Like, did I think I was going to be talking <laughs> a bagel at the same? I don't know what it was. Like. Uh, <laughs> but like, I have a bagel right now. And uh, my computer hilarious. is propped up by a tea that I made that I also did, did not drink and forgot to drink and ended up using it as a prop to prop up my computer. So. <laughs> So all the secrets are coming out now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling you all the secrets here on this show, but because that is so silly and I can't believe I like used my teacup as the 
as my computer stand. Fair. Well, <laughs> well, we thank you for sharing that information. <laughs> um, and on that note, let's just say thank you to everyone who's tuned in tonight. Thank you for your lovely comments. And Val says, I had a fabulous time. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, she is next level. Uh, this is an honest war and entertaining show because I always try and put the E in entertainment. So I hope you were entertained. I hope you found some uh, some of the conversation insightful and hopefully you learn something new today as well. That's what we try to do sometimes learn something new about each other. And I feel like I learned a lot about you today and I can't wait to have you uh, back on the show again soon. Do stay on the line though because I do have a question to ask you regarding somebody commented on the Instagram post, but I'm not sure if it was directly me or you. So I did a little clarification because I did reach out to the person, but I've not heard nothing back yet. So I'll, I'll ask you <laughs> to see if they reached out to you maybe. So uh, I got a bit confused because they didn't say, they didn't say who they reached out to. So I was like, oh, is it me? Because I've not received nothing. So we'll see about that. But, um, I but I can let you know if I received something. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying if you received it, and then I know it's not that at me because, you know, because the new way Instagram you can do it, as you probably know, you can collaborate with another user, goes on their mm-hmm. profile, and then this person's just commented saying, I think you're a DM, but they didn't say who it's for, me or you. So I, I just want to clarify uh, with you first before. Oh, I guess we don't know. I'll let you know if I received a DM. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't know. Sometimes those DMs, I guess it depends. Who it is because sometimes they can be a little spammy but well i can awesome. i i did go on the profile i was going to block the person i thought it was a bot but they do have twenty-seven thousand followers so i think that they, they are quite legit to my to me so i thought that's okay. why i thought i'll ask you because they seem like a legit person <laughs> but for that, okay well then i'll check because i do receive a lot of dms yeah. these days. i've been trying to keep up with them but i sometimes can't i, I just get like I open and there's like a whole block of like 20 like chats and I'm like oh my gosh I, I don't, it's too much for the second but um uh, but I do open them and I try to respond and I I chat with everyone everyone knows on here that I I, I will be ch- I'll chat with you all oh, yeah. of, course, <laughs> okay. of course it's great to see it because because that, that, that's what stands you out from other celebrities and other social uh influencers because of the fact that you do respond and you do try and make your time how to respond back to everybody because a lot of people don't do that you know they might respond to one or two people and that's it so it's you know that's something else which is why you've got your your following as you've got in the moment because you do take time at your busy schedule to you know respond because without those people you'd be nothing and and you've got to be thankful and i feel like you you are and that i hope that continues and really keeps you growing because you do have over i think last time i checked thirty six thousand followers on facebook um on instagram it's something wild as well, with like 17,000 followers or something like that. And now on X, it's more like a thousand followers, which I don't want to bring up to you, but uh, I just did now, so I apologize for that. Oh, X, where are you at? Why I know. Haven't... <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know, because you are quite active on there, so I can understand if you were active on there, why you've got that. But I mean, you are quite active, so I thought, what's going I on here? It, but, you know, I don't think, I think I just end up posting whatever I post on Instagram on there, yes. and I think maybe x is a little different i'm supposed to be tweeting funny little statements or something and i i don't think i do that so i think i don't maybe i'm not fitting the uh the typical profile for what you know for an x user <laughs> well same here because i'm not very good at it either uh but yeah i'm glad you i'm glad everyone who tuned in found something new insightful and i hope you all enjoyed it because i hope i i did as well uh, i hope you did at home and if you did, smash that like button, share the video around, tell more about Cara Connolly, tell her why she's a fantastic artist and why she is raw, real, and exciting as well. If you Thanks. also want to leave a future question or any comments about this episode, ways we can improve it, then leave a comment. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you want to see more of my content, I don't know why you shouldn't, because you should, because it's the best kept secret, so you get all the nice gossip and teasers on this show, then smash that subscribe button. It takes 10 seconds or less. As I mentioned as well, Carla Connolly has over 800 subscribers on her official YouTube channel, so you should subscribe to that as well. But if you're not already subscribed to that, then you should do. But, uh, you know, why not? But I have way less subscribers than that, as you can probably tell. 234 subscribers as it stands. 
And um, I'm told the next episode right. drops whenever that might be, because you never know who will come on the show next. Maybe one of those suggestions which Kara or you guys in the comments gave earlier might be on the show next. Who knows? You never really find out. But until then, enjoy the rest of your morning, night, evening, or afternoon.